So I'm pretty sure that when you think about war, you imagine things like large tank battles, devastated cities, or even glorious sword fights. And, well, historically speaking, yeah, that's often been what war's been like. But today, it's different. Today, we're about to talk about a war that lasted 38 minutes. That's right, 38 minutes, making it the shortest war in history. Intrigued? Well, stick around, as we're just about to discuss the Anglo-Zanzibar War. Welcome to Zanzibar, a small archipelago of the coast of Africa. A truly charming place with beautiful beaches and palm trees. Now, do you know who doesn't have beautiful beaches and palm trees? The British. In the late 19th century, the Europeans were doing a little scrambling, taking over most of Africa. And so, in 1890, the British showed up with their big guns and thick accents and took control of Zanzibar. Now, the British weren't really annoying, occasionally stepping in to force the Zanzibaris to ban slavery, for example, and the archipelago still enjoyed a certain amount of autonomy. So, the British were technically in control of the archipelago, but a sultan actually ruled over it. Which means that Zanzibar was something that we call a protectorate. In short, not a country, not a colony, more like something in between. And in 1896, the sultan of the island was this guy, Ahmad Ben Suini. And I would like to apologize if I just butchered this man's name. Now, on the 25th of August, 1896, Ahmad passed away, and the British wanted this guy, Ahmad Ben Mohammed. I swear I'm not making these names up to replace him. But suddenly, out of nowhere, this guy showed up. Here's Khalid Ben Bargish, the previous Sultan's nephew, and also, possibly, the man that killed him. Now, we're not sure he actually did that, so let's not spread misinformation here. I mean, does he look to you like the kind of man that would do something like this? <laughs> yes. And what makes this even more suspicious is that, right after Ahmad passed away, Khalid moved into the royal palace and proclaimed himself the new sultan. Now, the British were understandably really pissed about all this, and threatened to come back with their big guns to kick Khalid out of the palace. But that man was the literal definition of unfazed. And so, began mustering a force of close to 3,000 men to help defend the palace. He also ordered to aim the few machine guns they had at the harbor, and to take control of the few rusty ships that were in the harbor, like the HHS Glasgow, for example. And yes, this is actually one of the ships they used to defy the British Navy. Now, very quickly, British ships started showing up around the island, and an ultimatum was sent to Khalid on the next day requiring him to get out of the palace and go home by 9 a.m. on the 27th of August, or the British would open fire. Now, Khalid thought the British were bluffing, and so stayed in the palace. Which means that it was time for war. Now, fasten your seatbelts, because it's going to be quick. At 9 a.m., the order was given to open fire at the palace. In 902, the first shots were fired, marking the beginning of the war. Now, given that the royal palace was mostly made of wood, the whole place very quickly started burning down. In 905, the HHS Glasgow fired on a British ship. Yeah, that was a mistake, and very quickly, the Glasgow found itself at the bottom of the sea. At 940, the shelling stopped. By that point, the whole palace was on fire and Khalid had fled. The war was already over. Now, the guy the British wanted on the throne in the first place, Ahmad ben Mohammed, became the new Sultan of Zanzibar, and Khalid ben Bargish fled to German East Africa. The British would actually capture him during the First World War, but by that point, they really had no clue what to do with him and so ended up sending him to a bunch of different exotic places. In other words, free vacations for life. Now, more seriously, 
If this war demonstrated anything, it is the influence and power Europe wielded, especially the British at the time. Being able to show up with the fleet halfway across the world to remove a guy you don't like from power on a random island is no small feat and shows just how powerful the British Empire was at the time.